so here's my Tashton Towers DX70, 72 foot crank up, very heavy duty tower, 2,000 pounds. It's rated for 45 square feet of antenna wind load at 100 mile an hour winds, 50 square feet of, of wind load at 95 mile an hour winds. And uh, it's motorized, limit switches, uh, pulleys everywhere, uh, rollers between the tower sections. The bottom section's 28 inches, uh, outside to outside. The top section is even massive. The top section, 18 inches outside to outside. It's bigger than a lot of the bottom section of a lot of towers. So you see here, pulleys or uh, wheels for the sections to glide on the cabling on this thing boy I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like doing the new uh, new cables on this thing when the time comes look at how many cables this thing has and it's a positive pull down I mean look at this thing that is not gonna be fine that's gonna be one of those things where I call Tashton Towers and say hey come and uh, recable this thing for me one horsepower motor, 50 to, uh, 50 to one gear ratio uh, drive on this thing. So anyways, have to play with it a little bit. Kind of like revving a new race car in the garage. You know, you can't, uh, can't take it out on track yet, but you gotta play with it. So we're gonna extend it just a little bit I don't want to go too far because, you know, all the weight on the side and uh, probably uh, just don't want to go too far. So I'll go out a foot or two. How cool. Can't wait to get this thing. Uh, can't wait to get this thing up. So I got the tower hole dug. And I'm just waiting for some last minute stuff with uh, an engineering firm I have working with the county to get the permit finalized. It's Los Angeles County, so it's a pain in the ass. Uh, the easy part was uh, planning and zoning. I had approval from planning and zoning because this meets as defined in the Los Angeles Building Code, developmental stand or yeah, developmental standards. So I'll be able to put it up. It's just getting the permit requires everything from soils reports, uh, liquefaction, um, they want seismic reports because I live in a very rural area next to a fault line. So it's, um, that's all we're waiting on. Anyways, it's got limit switches here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and retract it and let the uh, limit switch do its job. We go all right so i have my fun for today can't tell you how uh excited i am to be able to finally get this up and uh the antennas i have planned for it uh step ir db 36 75 meter uh, option so i'll have 75 meters to six meters on a 36 foot boom and then a two meter 440 on top that's it. That's all I'm gonna put on this thing. Oh, catch you later. So this is where the tower is gonna go. Look at this hole. The hole is four by four by nine foot deep below grade, and then six inches from the grade up. These uh, two by sixes, concrete come on top of the two by sixes. So there's nine and a half feet uh, right there, and. Um, here, this is kind of neat, my little laser measuring device. So if I take the roof, the roof from right here, at the highest point, I got 22 feet 
three inches. Now, the tower fully retracted is 22 feet. So with my mast, putting the antenna two feet above, I'll have two foot of clearance for the antenna at fully, fully retracted, which is perfect. I made these covers to cover up the hole until I can get the tower put in concrete poured. And over here, this is where the four actual cables get fed to my radio room. Tied with three and a half inch strap to a 10 foot three quarter inch ground rod. And then the LMR 600 feed lines for HF uh, surge suppressor and a VHF, UHF surge suppressor. This will go to a Step IR DB36. This one here will be to a Diamond X300NA. And these are for the antenna control lines and rotor control. And then I have over here my handy dandy outlet right here. And this is a 20 amp, 120 volt circuit. I'll wire up to the motor. My little disconnect. Makes it nice and nice and easy. And that's the tower side. Here's the uh, base for the uh, tower. It's also the concrete reinforcement. The uh, tower outside legs are 28 inches. This is 38 inches outside. Number 11 rebar, number five crossbars. And it's uh, six and a half feet of this will be buried. It'll be buried up to right about here. Right about there, and that's six and a half feet buried below uh, the level. I'm thinking about adding some more rebar because my hole is nine and a half feet deep. Um, I don't want uh, unsupported concrete below the bottom of the um, this uh, piece, so I want to strap or tie tie together some extra rebar, maybe some number eight, the three and a half feet, so like six feet of it, so it comes up about three feet, tie it down and, and then uh, wrap it with number three, um, you know, maybe on 12 inch centers and extend this cage out. Also up top, this will be a few inches below uh, about four inches below the top of the concrete. I'm thinking about running some number three crossbars in a hash just to give the top of the concrete that's above that's above the uh, level um, a really sturdy, strong, uh, crack-free uh, top just to make sure the top, that's, that's the only thing. It's not there to strengthen anything. It's just there to keep the concrete together to keep it from from cracking but I do want to extend this out a little bit because I I just have this mental idea of of if somehow the concrete was somehow a crack all the way through down here at six and a half feet below grade then I have three feet of concrete that's unsupported or not connected and having the rebar tying it all together just makes me feel better I know that's not gonna happen but it makes me feel better for grounding I have this strap this uh, three and a half inch strap it's a 10 foot three quarter inch rod beat into the earth there and that's tied to my cable entry panel which i showed a little bit ago but i also i'm going to have each leg tied to its own 10 foot three quarter inch rod this leg or this top of this rod will tie to a leg over here and then back there we see some number two solid copper or not, it's number two solid tin copper that comes to a ground rod over here. It's bonded, ignore this one, that's not in use. That's uh, exothermic bonded uh, to another 10 foot, three quarter inch rod. And that's uh, number two solid, which will eventually tie to this leg over here. 
And in the front, the leg that will be up here in the front, the orientation of the tower is going to be flat against the back. The motor assembly and uh, will be back here by the wall. And uh, then of course connect my power outlet. Because uh, I'm not going to tilt this tower over. It's going to be set in place by a crane and it's never going to tilt over. Um, the front leg, I have another 10 foot, three quarter inch rod over here, not in use yet. That's going to get buried in the bottom of the hole. So 10 feet down or nine feet down, it's going to be buried in the front. And I'm going to do another exothermic bond of number two solid. And it's going to run up the side between the concrete and the earth dirt and come up and that's going to tie to the front leg, mostly for redundancy. I mean, it's the only time I'm ever going to be able to put a rod down there, so why not, right? I mean, kind of hard to do once you pour the concrete. So uh, that's going to be my three ground rods to each leg of the tower, all separated out, spread out. This one will be kind of neat because this is the top 10 feet of dirt. That one down there will be the starting 10 feet down. So I'll have almost 20 vertical feet of ground rod, which I think is kind of cool. And then uh, here's a whole ground system between this box, my cellar, and uh, the radio room. I think there's five more ground rods between here and the radio room. They're all bonded together, exothermic bonding. I probably went overkill, but that's okay. I like the tower parts uh, over here. Here's my two inch, quarter inch wall. This is uh, 80,000 PSI DOM galvanized mast from Tashin Towers. So that's gonna be about, uh, insert about halfway, about eight foot, seven and a half feet into the tower and uh, seven and a half feet out of the top. And in this bucket here, I got, of course I gotta have my cool high RF energy sign, you know, because why not? One of the perks of uh, working for broadcast industry is occasionally find things like that laying around. Um, over here, this is all the tower hardware. Six bolts, three quarter inch bolts. Those are grade five uh, per leg. However, that wasn't good enough for me. So I went ahead and got these nice gold irritated, gold uh, plated. Well, not gold plated. Um, the goldish in color. It has to do with the, the they're, 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 they're zinc. It's a zinc finish and then it's another process afterwards. It's supposed to be uh, about as corrosion resistant as you're gonna get. These are grade eight, grade eight nuts, grade eight bolts, and they're flange head. Grade eight washers, grade eight lock washers, because I wanted the flange heads for some reason. Anyways, I found all this, got all that. Here's some, my spool of number two solid. And then the KF7P cable loops, then my ultra heavy duty thrust bearing, uh, then uh, more parts for grounding the legs of the tower, and then of course the rotor plate. So just more parts. It's coming together as soon as I get the permit, which I'm I'm hoping and expecting in. Uh, four, six weeks, um, somewhere in that time frame. That's, that's what I'm being told. Then the tower, which is sitting back here, can finally get, uh, put into place.